Match 12 of Fair Break Invitational. Off the mark with an easy single, Gurung. I'll be sweating because I'm a bit nervous. Oh, it's been great to watch you. Good luck with the game today. Thank you very much. Uh, terrific interview with Gary Chan. Terrific finish to the over two for Elise Villani. It's 46 for one off seven. As Kerry Chan was wrapping up that interview, that's the way Lee Spilani put the exclamation point on it. That's a vicious cover drive. It's too easy either. Parried for six. Short, pulled away. Villani gets four. Adepatu drops one short. And that the bounce in this pitch is so consistent, you can rely on it. A little bit of turn, but it turns into the hitting arc. Local toss across the cover and it's gone through the legs. Four runs that have been 12 balls since the last boundary, and the Falcons have left the Sapphires off the hook there with that one. Helpful for the Sapphires. Oh, it is. It's through the legs, and not one you're going to want to go back and look at the replay. Night. A decisive spell for the Barmy Army. Carved away, finds the gap. Lovely work, Elise Bellani. Just a deep cover out on the offside in the sunny part of the ground and waited on that. Fast hands. Not a lot wrong with the delivery. Off pace, fingers down the seam, angling back towards the off stump. Villani's class, getting her strike rate above 100 in the process, her fourth boundary. One can expect her to play more shots in the reverse view, mind you. She's got all the innovations in the book, and this would be a strokes. Straight back over the bowler's head, all the way for six. That's the first big one we've seen since Grace Harris departed. And it brings up the half century for Elise Villani. Her second in the competition. It's the right moment for her to put the foot down. And does so with a four and a six in consecutive deliveries. Two Australians delivering the goods for the Sapphires in back-to-back -back games. It was Grace Harris in the previous game last night. And it's Elise Villani who was captaining the side in Sanami's absence. Back of the hand, slow ball first up. Well waited on by Villani. Oh, gosh. Adipati got to the contest, and I think she went too far. And she's filthy as well. She should be. A player of her experience. One bit of mitigation might be that the ball's in the shade and comes into the light, so judging where she needs to get to, but overran it. Villani gets her fifth boundary. Pace off again, over the top of it, off back to back fours. Villani has moved from 40 to 60 in a hurry. Laplau has that back of the hand slow ball. It's effectively her stock delivery at this stage of the innings. Always looking to take pace off the ball, but Villani's seen enough now in this competition. She knows to wait for it and not swing too early, especially with bit off inside the circle. Probably a bit too predictable for Lampla. 100. The last ball. It's all the way to the rope. Struck that well, Villani. Looks like we're going towards the sweeper, but climbs it well enough. 15 from the over, a wicket as well. 138 for two, one over to come. Again, just knowing it's coming. When it's on the money, when it's fuller, it's difficult to negotiate. But when it's short, and the player of Villani's temperament can go back. Well, it really does open up the onside. It's picky gap stuff, and she did so here expertly. Lap down knows it as well. And deep square in the sun as well. Oh, three-point class. 
Bellani able to use the depth of the crease and crunch it into the gap. Up into the 70s. And the Sapphire from here should get 150. Atpat was darting them in, isn't she? Probably she takes a bit of a bit of the pace off and brings out some of her leggies as well. The short there. Easy for Villani at this stage of an innings. More air has to be satisfied with one.